So we are having the co-founder of Aether, Mark Ryden. It's nice to see you. Thank you for having me. Pleasure to be here. Could you briefly um, share about yourself? Sure. Uh, my name's Mark. I'm one of the co-founders here at Aether. My background is in infrastructure building. I started my career building massive infrastructure projects all over the world. Uh, got the entrepreneurial itch. Actually founded a, a biotech company to begin with, uh, but uh, ran that out for a couple of years before exiting and feeling my way back into the big infrastructure world, uh, where I started to work on the GPU cloud very, very early, mostly focusing on GPU cloud utility within the gaming and cloud gaming environment. Realized that there was an opportunity there uh, to address some of the performance and scalability challenges that we saw in centralized cloud GPU deployment and realized that maybe we could address those in a decentralized way. And that was very much the beginning of, uh, of Aether. So what are the characteristics of Aether products? Sure. So Aether is a decentralized GPU infrastructure for gaming and AI companies. For those of the audience that maybe don't know, uh, AI runs on GPUs, right? They are the engine for AI. If you want to build or train AI, you need the GPUs and you need data. Those two things together allow you to make more intelligent models. But the biggest companies in the world, they're all fighting to have the best AI model, right? So they're also fighting to have the most GPUs. And effectively, there are not enough GPUs in the world. Right. So how can you address this issue? Well, one issue is to create an infrastructure layer, right, where people and companies that own these resources that maybe don't have 100 uh, percent utilization. Maybe they have some idle GPUs or not used GPUs. Well, now, instead of them just sitting there doing nothing, they can connect it to our protocol. And our protocol can make those GPUs available again to the global market. So actually, this is like a, a net new supply that's being redistributed to the global compute ecosystem, which is a very, very uh, powerful narrative within the, the AI, but also in the gaming space. So for in the case of AI machine running and game cloud services, the performance, specifications, stability, and requirements of the needed will likely differ. So how is this being supported? Yeah, that's a really good question. Because our project is a DPIN project. You may know this term. DPIN stands for Decentralized Physical Infrastructure Network, right? So it's a network built on the blockchain that has real hardware in the real world. For us, that hardware is GPUs, but for other projects, maybe it's like storage for Filecoin or Helium device, right? So this physical infrastructure is not all owned by Aether. Actually, we don't own any. It's all owned by other people. That is the power of decentralization. But what it does mean is that the network needs to be very careful about who is adding their uh, hardware to the network because service quality is really critical because if you're building a, uh, a, cloud, a cloud service, your customers have very strict requirements for the quality of the, of the service that they will buy. Now, when you're building a deep end, generally you would say you have two kind of avenues you can, you can pursue from, a, from an early stage. One is aggregating consumer GPUs. So this is aggregating a gamer PC or a laptop. This is a very easy way to get a large number of GPUs. And it's an easy way to build community. Because if you provide your GPU to a network, uh, you'll earn some tokens. So immediately, you're very happy. right? You will say, this project is the best. Yeah. But on the project side, actually, you have a, a problem. Because who is the customer for your GPU? not many companies want to buy a consumer GPU cloud because how can we sell a product when we cannot tell you, hey, don't turn off your GPU, right? If it's nighttime, maybe you'll turn it off, right? We cannot control it. So the ability for us or a protocol to sell compute when it's built on a consumer uh, compute uh, aggregation layer 
is really, really difficult. You have a very low revenue ceiling because not very many companies want to buy it. So the other opportunity is aggregate enterprise. Focus only on bringing enterprise compute into your business. And this is what Aether did, right? So 100% of the compute that is uh, in Aether's network, all 44,000 GPUs, right? It's all 100% enterprise grade, sitting in a data center connected to enterprise grade network infrastructure. And this means that we are able to meet the very strict service, quality, uptime, and performance requirements of the biggest tech companies in the world, right? Uh, if we chose to bring maybe consumer GPUs in, we couldn't do this. That's why we made the difficult decision early on to do the harder business. It's much harder to work with a company than with an individual, right? Uh, but we made that decision because we knew the product we wanted to deliver had to serve big enterprise customers. And that's why uh, we have now some of the biggest companies in the world building on Aether. Uh, it's why we're able to announce you know, pretty incredible revenue numbers, right? We're sitting at around 36 million in, in annual recurring revenue, growing 10% month on month, right? These are really big numbers for a crypto company, but it's because we are an enterprise grade deep in and we serve enterprise customers. So for mass adoption of GPU cloud computing, it seems necessary a bit of stability and consistency that surpasses companies like AWS, Google, like that. So as well as security, so such as uh, protection against hacking risk. So is it possible to achieve it on Aether? Yeah, definitely. And this is also a good question because it highlights the biggest challenge when you're building in Web3, right? Web3 has a reputation and some Web2 companies, some Web2 people, they don't trust Web3. Right. So actually, when you're building something in Web3, I tell people you cannot just be cheaper. You cannot just have a better performance. Actually, you need to optimize for trust first, trust and stability. Right. Because if you don't have those, then it doesn't matter how cheap you are. It doesn't matter how good you are. Optimize for trust and stability first. And that's something that we focused on. Right. We knew that if we were going to be building for enterprise customers, they needed to trust us. So actually, from a protocol level, from a token reward level, everything that we've done has not necessarily been to optimize for uh, scalability or for cost reduction. Actually, we've been optimizing for stability, trust, and long-term rewards. We want anyone that joins the ecosystem to be able to say, Aether is a stable place for us to exist for 5, 10, 15 years. We don't want people coming in just because the token's having a pump for a few months. Uh, so this was a big consideration for us. Uh, and actually that stability and that trust we built into our ecosystem is, I think, why uh, it was uh, so easy for us to list on the, the big Korean exchanges. We were able to demonstrate how trusted our network was, the quality of our tokenomics, how we reward our community and our miners. Uh, and I think that, you know, the, the Upbit and Bitthumb and CoinOne kind of uh, exchanges really, really appreciated that. Well, you're saying that rather than the price of token, the project is more important. 100%. So you've mentioned about the tokenomics. So how do you see the Korean market in the perspective of tokenomics in Amayur? Sure. So... Actually, when, when we launched our token in June, our biggest goal was get onto the Korean exchanges. We wanted uh, to have our token available to the Korean market. I think everyone in the world knows Korea has one of the strongest, if not the strongest, crypto community. So for us, it was a must do. So we did everything we could to, uh, to get our, uh, our project listed here. Uh, and we're very, very happy that we have. I think the big goal for us now is, okay, the token's available. Koreans can buy it if they want, but why should they buy it? We want to educate them. We want to build our community here. We want ambassadors. We want people that are out there, you know, shilling Aether to their friends, telling them how great we are. Uh, and, and we hope that we can have a really strong presence here. Okay, so as the AI industry develops, um, let's go back to your fundamental. 
So the demand for computing power is growing, growing exponentially. So, and it is said that the current supply is insufficient to meet this demand. So projects like AI Share have been initiated to make up for this. So this short form by utilizing idle research. But however, uh, given the increasing demand for computing power in AI industry, there will eventually come a point when even all the ideal like resources in the world will not be enough. So what should be done then? Yeah, this is a big a big challenge in the yeah. global AI uh, community. Just, yeah. Actually, compute requirements are scaling up exponentially. Another major bottleneck is power, right? The compute requirements go up, but you need power to, to power yeah. the compute as well. So that's a big bottleneck. There are even studies suggesting that there will not be enough power on planet Earth within the next two or three years to power the compute requirements we need. So actually, the, the scientific community, the, the, uh, the, the kind of the, the global elite are, are quite aware of this. You'll see there are massive amounts of money being deployed into alternative power resources, into data center and modular data center and green uh, energy power data center uh, developments. I think from the compute side, it's a difficult question, uh, but I'll answer it this way. There's two types of potential compute. There's the enterprise compute. These are the big, powerful GPUs from NVIDIA, like the H100, right? Uh, we can only make so many of these GPUs every year. So it's reasonably easy to predict how many of these there will be in the, in the coming years. Um, and I think there is definitely a shortfall there. There's not going to be enough. But there is also idle H100s, but I also don't think that will be enough. But then you have this other type of compute, and it is all of the idle compute in devices like your phone or your laptop. Right now, we don't know how to best use that power, right? Like I said before, it's very difficult to build a consumer-grade GPU compute cloud. We don't know how yet. But I think within maybe the next year, there will be... Uh, there's already some research being released about uh, distributed training conducting on multiple consumer devices. I think within the next maybe two to five years, you will be able to connect your device just like you connect your device to the internet. You'll be able to connect your device to the global compute cloud and you will be able to dedicate portions of your consumer compute to a global supercomputer mesh. So I think that accessing and utilizing all of the hidden compute in consumer devices could be one of the answers to that question. But there's still a lot of uh, R&D to, yeah. to do before we get there. Thank you for your uh, answer. So, so I'm now curious about um, your feedback obtained from running extra project. So were there any achievements related to GPU providers, users, or platform transactions that you would like to share? Sure. I mean, we're, we're the biggest uh, deep in in the, the AI space. We have 43, 44,000 GPUs. We have the, the largest collection of high-performance GPUs, so the H100s. These are the most difficult to get GPU. Each one costs maybe 300,000. And we have uh, nearly 4,000 of those H100. So 10 times more than the next biggest Web3 project, which is really, really cool. And it means that we're able to partner with very, very big customers as a result. So I think the, the power and the scale of our network is something that I'm very proud of. Uh, of course, we have this new uh, mining device. It's called the Aether Edge. Aether it's a Edge. physical mining device. You can see it at myedge.io. And actually, you buy this, you plug it into the power in your home, connect to Wi-Fi, and it will Mine. be an AI mining device. Passive. You don't need to control it or you can just leave it. And actually, our network will send AI jobs to this machine. And then when the machine does the work, you will earn the rewards. So it's the first uh, machine like this uh, in the world. 
we've partnered with Qualcomm, one of the biggest uh, chipset manufacturers in the world. It has their latest AI chip inside, and uh, it's super cool. No one else has built a, a device like this. So we're very uh, keen on expanding our network, always creating new opportunities for retail community to come in and participate. And when they participate, it will be in a meaningful way, a real useful way. And I think that's, uh, that's really cool. Yeah, it sounds really cool. I'm, I'm really interested in that. <laughs> All right, we'll get you one. Okay, <laughs> thank you. So uh, finally, so do you have any message to convey to our viewers? Sure. We are so happy and proud that we were able to list on uh, the major Korean exchanges. Uh, we can't wait to share more about Aether and our journey with the Korean community. Uh, and we hope that we can be just super present here. I, I love Korea. Uh, I'm so happy when I'm in Seoul. I just want to eat Korean barbecue every day. Uh -huh. And uh, I want more reasons to come back. Uh, so let's let's make Aether uh, a, a, a top project in Korea. Hey, I will be looking forward to the future. 100%. Yeah, thank you for today's interview. Thank, thank you. you. My pleasure.